Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about how to create the perfect morning routine. And we're also going to talk about why you want to create the perfect morning routine and how it's going to help you in your life. Before we dive into today's video though, if you want to go ahead and keep up with all of the videos I put out, I put out new videos every single week, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then right next to it, hit that little bell so that you get notified whenever I put out new videos. Also, comment down below where in the world you're watching this video from because we have people from all over the world and I love to see where our community is. Okay, so if we're diving into how to create the perfect morning routine, the best way to start is to dive into the book called The Miracle Morning, which is written by my good friend, Hal Elrod. This book has sold over a million copies and it is self-published. If that doesn't tell you how successful this book is, I don't know what will because the most people who put out published books through big publishing companies don't get anywhere near a million copies. Hal made this book on his own, published it on his own, and sold over a million copies of it. So we're gonna dive into his six key points to creating the perfect morning routine today. And you might be asking, why, why do I want to create a morning routine? Well, if you look at the most successful people in the world, they have morning routines. If you look at Richard Branson, if you look at Tim Cook, Steve Jobs when he was alive. But then also if you look at, and I don't wanna think just successful people as far as money, I also want you to realize successful people as far as you look at them and they could be happy, they could be successful, they could be spiritual. The Pope has a morning routine. The Dalai Lama has a morning routine. There's so many people that you would see as successful in life as far as they have great lives, whether that's money, spiritually, relationships, and they have a morning routine. And you might ask yourself, why do I wanna develop a morning routine? That might be the first question in your head. Well, most of the time what we do is we start our day in reaction mode. We wake up a few minutes before we have to leave and go to the office, we shower up real quick, we get ready and we're gone. And we're starting our day on someone else's time. We're starting our day for in reaction mode and we're leaving to go to the office or leaving to go do something. That's on someone else's time. But it's nice to wake up and have 30 minutes, an hour, two hours just to yourself for your own personal development, for whether that's mentally, whether that's physically. It's your own development and starting your day on your time. Maybe before your kids wake up, maybe before your, your spouse wakes up, maybe before your roommates wake up, and you have this time to yourself specifically designed to work on yourself. And as we're diving into the, the six key points from the book, The Miracle Morning, there's an acronym for it. It's SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S. -E so when you're trying to create the perfect morning routine, there's six different things that you can put into your morning routine. Now in the book, he recommends that you do 10 minutes for each of these things, for each one of them, S-A-V-E-R-S. 10 minutes for each one of them. Hey, you could do 10 minutes if you want to, or I recommend if you look at them and you say, okay, out of these six, I like these three the most. Maybe you could wake up an hour early and instead of spending 10 minutes on each of the six, maybe you spend 20 minutes on the, each of the three that you like the most. It's completely up to you. It's your morning routine. You don't have to rush through it. It's what you want to do. That's the, the, the most important thing. So what does the first S stand for? It stands for silence, right? So often we wake up, we go immediately to our phone. We start uh, getting ready, talking to people, hopping on the internet, hopping on phone calls, going to the emails, whatever it is. The silence can be silence with your eyes open. Maybe you're just sitting there enjoying a cup of coffee on your back porch and you're just giving yourself 10 to 20 minutes of just sitting silently and just enjoying yourself and enjoying your own time and enjoying your day. It could also be meditation. This is a really good chance to start meditating. And meditation is not that hard. And this, this is not gonna be talking about how to meditate, but meditation is literally just being alone with yourself, closing your eyes, and it doesn't have to be you have no thoughts. Because most people think, oh, I'm not meditating correctly, that's why I'm not doing it. It's just taking time to silently be with yourself. If you think of when your best ideas come, most people say their best ideas come when they're either in the shower or when they're on the toilet, and sometimes when they're driving their car. The reason why is because there's, there is a focus on just doing the task at hand, just washing your body, right? That's if we're saying your best ideas come in the shower, well, you don't have the internet that's taking up your time. You don't have people talking to you. You might not have music going. And so there's very few stimulus coming through and you're just there with your thoughts. That's when your best ideas can come through. 
Well, why don't you create the exact same space in your meditation? You can sit there and you know, you're not trying to stop your thoughts. Just observe your thoughts, notice them, identify. Okay. That was a thought. And what you'll notice is that as you start getting better at this meditation, the silence in the morning, some of your best ideas will start coming through. I'll, I'll say my best ideas. I had an amazing, actually, if I'm being completely honest, I meditated as soon as I woke up this morning and I had an amazing idea complete being completely honest with you. That's when all of my best ideas come through is when I just stop being distracted. So the first part, the first part of the acronym SAVERS is the S, which is silence, also known for meditation. The second thing, which is the A, A stands for affirmations. And affirmations don't have to be, you know, the universe is sending money to me from all areas of the globe, like most people think you, they are if you've ever watched The Secret. An affirmation is just a simple reminder. You know, so an affirmation could be, I'm going to wake up and lead with love in everything that I do and every person that I interact with. That could be an affirmation. Today I'm going to work really hard towards making $100,000 this year. That can be an affirmation. Today I'm going to put 100% of my focus into each conversation with, that I have. That can be an affirmation. So the best thing to do is come up with three to five affirmations of what you wanna work on, reminders of ways, ways that you want to improve and get better. And this can be part of your morning routine and things that you tell yourself over and over again every single morning, just the simple reminders, okay? Next thing is the V. V stands for visualization. Visualization is extremely, extremely important. And the reason why is because visualization allows you to be able to see the future that you want to create. And then what's exciting about it is then you go back into your normal day and you're excited because you've seen what the future can be and now you have more motivation to go and create that future. So there's a thing called the reticular activating system inside of your brain. If you've ever bought a new car and you never see that car anywhere, but then after you buy it, you start seeing it everywhere. The reason why is because your reticular activating system. The reticular activating system is basically the thing that filters out all of the bits of information that come into your brain all day long and allow you to get just the most important things. So within one given second, this second right now, you have over tr two trillion bits of information that your brain could pick up on. Two trillion bits of information per second. But your brain filters out everything except for 200 bits per second. 200. So that means it filters out almost two trillion bits of information per second because it's only allowing in 200. The reticular activating system is the thing that filters out all of the stuff that you don't need. So the reason why you see that car all the time, even though you never saw it before, was because now that car holds a place in your brain. The reticular activating system notices that car whenever the car passes now. What does this have to do with visualization? Well, when you visualize what you want, what happens? You start seeing people, places, things, and opportunities pop up in your day because of the visualization. You're telling your brain in the morning what you want it to focus on. That's the point of visualization. And you know, people always say, oh, synchronicity. Man, I was thinking about that today and then this happened. I was thinking about this person and then they called me. It's the reticular activating system. You're basically turning that part of your brain on to what you want it to focus on. So instead of thinking about the negative things and the things you don't want, start visualizing the things that you do want and you'll start noticing them pop up inside of your day. That's the importance of visualization. The fourth part of this morning routine is exercise. It could be working out, it could be yoga, it could be going for a walk with your dog, it could be just moving a little bit more, maybe doing some stretches, some form of exercising in the morning. There's a ton of different studies that show that exercising in the morning usually helps people's brains become more productive and, and work better throughout the day, but then also gives them more energy throughout the day. So it's important to start your day with even 10 minutes of yoga, 10 minutes of stretching, taking your dog for a really quick walk. Exercise is a key point to your morning routine. The fifth point to your morning routine is the R, which stands for reading. You know, take 10 minutes or read five pages, read 10 pages, read 30 pages is completely up to you. But read in the morning because what happens is your brain starts to, instead of starting your day off on, oh crap, I gotta take a shower, I gotta go get ready, da 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 da, and then you hang out, run, run out of the house, when you're reading, you start becoming more inspired. 
you start thinking about what the future could hold for you based on the stuff that you're reading. If you read something that's nonfiction, you learn something immediately in the morning, which might make you want to learn stuff more throughout the day. So start your day off with reading as well. Take 10 minutes, take 20 minutes, it's up to you. And the last part, the sixth one, stands for scribe, which I know Hal and scribe just stands for journaling. That's all that it is. His, he was, you know, he had saver and then he's like, saver J doesn't make sense. I can't use journaling. Uh, and his wife, Ursula, uh, was actually the one who said, oh, why don't we go ahead and look it up? And, you know, they looked up journaling, writing, and they said scribe. Oh, perfect. Savers. So if you're trying to figure out why somebody would use the word scribe, it's because it makes sense in the acronym savers, S-A-V-E-R-S. Journaling, taking 10 minutes, 15 minutes to write down what was great about yesterday? What can I do to make today great? What are three things that I'm grateful for this morning? Start your day off and if you just want to make it easy, just ask yourself three things that you're grateful for this morning. They don't have to be big things. It could be the fact that the outside there's trees that take all of your carbon dioxide and they turn them into oxygen and you have breath today. It could be that you still have your health. All of your children are healthy. You have great relationships. Whatever it is, the sun's shining. They don't have to be big things to be grateful for. Start your day off by just journaling three things that you're grateful for. And if you want to dive deeper into it, start to ask yourself good questions. Where do I want to be in a year, five years, 10 years? What's the number one thing that's holding me back? What can I do to get past it? What do I want in my life? What do I want in my relationships, in my bank account, in my career, in my, re- in my finances? in my materialistic goals, whatever it is, it's completely up to you. Just start journaling, scribing the things that you want in your life because now what happens is when you wake up in each day, you're not being reactive, you're being proactive by finding the things that you want in your life and figuring out how to create those and bringing them into your life. So that is the way to create the perfect morning routine. These are the six parts of it. So savers, S-A-V-E-R-S, silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, aka journaling, are the keys to creating the perfect morning routine. You can take 10 minutes, and you could, you know, this could be your hour-long routine. You take 10 minutes for each one of them, and that's six things times 10 minutes, that's one hour. Or you could look at this and go, you know what? I think to just make it easy on myself, instead of feeling like I have to do all of them, I could just do three of them. Put 20 minutes for each one of them so I don't feel like I'm rushing. You know, I really want to read, so maybe I'll put reading in there. I want to journal because I've heard about the benefits of journaling and I really need to start meditating, so then I'm going to put my meditation there. Give 20 minutes to each one of them. And then once you get good at waking up and creating this morning routine, then you can expand it. Then you can wake up earlier. But make it as easy as possible for you to wake up and start doing these things. So that's what I've got for you. If you love uh, this episode, you can buy the book, The Miracle Morning. I definitely recommend it. If you're out there and you're watching this video, I'm going to go ahead and put The Miracle Morning, a link to it down in the comments down below. You can buy it. Uh, I absolutely recommend this book. It's super short. It's super easy to read. And I would recommend that you go out and you buy it today and start creating the perfect morning routine. But Let me know, what was the number one thing that you learned from this video? Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are, the number one thing that you learned from it because I'm always curious to hear. And if you have any ideas of other videos that you want me to do, comment that down below. I'm always making new videos. I'm always looking for new ideas. So comment down below what you would like me to to do my next video on. And if you want to, go ahead and click that subscribe button that's over to the side. I put up new videos every single week. Make sure that you don't miss them. But I appreciate you for watching this and I'll see you on the next video.